it and pause the video if you want to copy it down. This is out of the Red Book, which you can find on my website. There's a link to the textbook. And then it's Chapter 5. The answers are also on there. Okay. I worked through some of these for you, and some of them I just got started. Um, I just made like an eight minute video and it just completely disappeared. So some of these papers are going to be written on more than I wanted them to be. You'll just have to bear with me. So, number 17. What I want to see is that in a problem on a test, you write down the variables that you know. You write down the number and the unit beside each variable. I want the variables written in the left column here. So first write the variable and then the equal sign, and then the number and the unit. I want it written in this order, so when you're deciding on what equation you want to use, you can simply look down this nice straight line to see what you know and what you don't know. Okay. So for this particular problem, I chose to use this equation, and I wanted to get A by itself. I knew everything in it except for A. I want to get A by itself. So to start out with, I just want to go ahead and get this whole segment by itself. So to do that, I subtracted the x naught from both sides. This is just like math, and we're solving for x. Okay? So I decided to subtract the x naught from both sides, and then it looked like this. And then I divided both sides by t. If I divide this side by t, it's gone. And if I divide this side by t, it's still there. So this is kind of how I want to see your work, but let me explain to you what I was doing before the video went out on me a while ago. One way you could do this is to take the difference in your V's, put it in parentheses, and factor out the unit. So you only have to deal with the unit one time. Okay? And then this goes in this whole section. This whole section is set aside for Vx minus Vx naught. This entire section is set aside for T. I don't want any fractions above or below the main line. So I have meters on top here and seconds on the bottom. So see, time is not down here crowding anything. It has its own section next door. Okay, so if you put this in your calculator, 36 minus 4 in parentheses divided by 4. Or if you want to in your head, you don't have to write all of this. You can just say 36 minus 4 is 32, and you don't even have to write this. You can just write 32 if you want to meters per second. Just make sure you have your units. Okay. From this cross, I can tell that meters does not cancel out and S times S does not cancel out. It's seconds squared. Okay. I see people write it like this all the time. I say, show your units, show your units, and they write it like this, and then they have a second on top and a second on bottom, and they cancel, and that's wrong. So every year I have college kids that text me or Facebook me or whatever and thank me for making them use the cross method. And every year I have high school kids just starting in physics grumbling. So it is very helpful for you to learn to do this and learn to do it well so it will help you in college. Okay? As far as do you have to do this, here's the answer. Y-E-S. You have to do it the entire first semester. If you're glowing and making straight A's, then you don't have to do it the second semester. It's your choice. You'll still have to show your work, but you don't have to use the cross. Okay, moving on to number 18. Again, everything you know or don't know should be in a line right here so we can uh, look at the equations and choose what equation we're going to use. This is just like 17, nothing new here. Um, you probably already have this equation memorized, so you could use that too. And change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So really, we're still getting the same equation. Same way, but be careful. Sometimes kids like to do the big number minus the small number no matter what, but you have to do final minus initial. And if you're slowing down and you have a positive velocity, then you can expect to get a negative acceleration. Okay, number 19. Okay, 19, let's see here. We were, let's see what we were doing here. Read the problem. I think maybe we were coasting downhill. Get to that page, yeah. 
car is coasting downhill with a speed of three, sec three meters per second. Now it gave us the speed, not the velocity. But then later in the problem it says to assume uphill is positive. So if we're talking about velocity, which has a direction, if this is going downhill, it's negative. So I had to put a negative on there. If I don't, my answer is going to be wrong. And they got the engine started. So after 2.5 seconds, this is how fast they were going, and they were going uphill. So that's positive. Looking for acceleration. Still not much new, except for the only thing is, be careful when you're subtracting the negative. Do it in your calculator, because sometimes your brain doesn't work. When you're subtracting the negative, you're really adding. OK, number 20. OK, on number 20, we have a bus that goes from 25 meters per second to zero in three seconds. I just go ahead and put the initial position every time just in case I need it. I'll just go ahead and list it. Looking for acceleration. Still not a whole lot new, but there's a big point to this question still. I didn't even work out A, but if this were your test question, you would get points deducted. Okay, so make sure you're working it out. But here's my point to B. You'll see this question on the AP exam a lot, and it'll be in the multiple choice section, and they will not give you the actual real answer. Okay, here's what they're going to do. They want you to manipulate equations. So if I am using this equation, and I have a certain change in velocity over a certain change in time, and that's my acceleration. Now the second question was, what if it takes the bus twice as long to stop? Okay, now I'm going to mark this out because that was in the video that messed up. So what if it takes twice as long to stop? Well, I'm going to manipulate the equation. If it takes twice as long to stop, I still go from 25 to 0, but I do it in 2t, twice the time. Whatever I do to this side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So it would be a divided by 2. So in the multiple choice section, I might have a choice that says 1 half a, or I might have a divided by 2. Either one of those would be a correct answer. Manipulating equations, you've got to learn how to do that because you're going to do a lot of it this year. This is a great, simple one to start on. Okay, I'm going to stop this video. I'm just going to make a second video so it doesn't cut out on me.